Hello, and welcome to another episode on how to convert your car from gas to electric, featuring this 1964 Mercedes 230 SL. In last week's episode, we talked about power brakes. This week, we're gonna talk a little bit about power steering. kind of showed you the, the uh, big picture with the uh, power brakes from the wiring circuitry to the vacuum uh, layout, installed, and so forth. Well, today we're not going to go quite that far as we're not ready to install the power steering yet. But we are going to give you some insights. Now, as with the power brakes, the power steering originally got its energy, its power, from the internal combustion engine. And once we remove that engine, we lose that source. That hydraulic pump is belt operated on the front of the engine. And so once we remove that, we have no way to operate the power steering. So what do we do? Well. Unlike the power brakes, which is typically done with just uh, the vacuum pump set up, there are several ways that you can do power steering. You can actually run a pulley off, the aux off an auxiliary shaft, off of the traction motor that would turn the stock power steering pump. Uh, you can have a separate motor that turns the stock power steering pump or you can use uh, all electric power steering, or you can use what we're gonna use in this project is an electric hydraulic setup. In other words, it's an electric motor turning a hydraulic pump. But in this case, instead of a separate motor turning a pulley, which turns the stock pump, we're gonna use one out of a, another vehicle that is all integrated. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a power steering pump out of a 2005 Toyota MR2. Third generation, they made these for, you know, for all the MR2s. Uh, we're going to use the third generation one because it's all incorporated. Earlier ones have a separate motor and pump um, that's separate to the reservoir, that's separate to the electronics. This has everything all in one unit. And so, much, much handier for our scenario, especially when we have very tight spaces to work with. We still have to put, you know, 29, almost 30 kilowatt hours of batteries in this vehicle. And the bulk of them need to go up front because that's where this car was designed to have the weight over this front axle. So 
We need to conserve space. This is a space saving setup. We have the motor on the bottom here. We have the pump here. Here is the uh, output right here. And then the reservoirs on top. This is the return. This is your electronics. This is where your connections are. We're not going to use all of the connections. Now, this weighs 10 pounds. It's, it's heavy just, you know, holding it here <laughs> while I talk, but it's got shock mounting on it. We'll have to come up with some kind of bracket that will mount to the vehicle and then, of course, mount to this built-in mounting system. So what happens is the hoses that we disconnected from the stock pump now will be connected here. This one simply, you know, fits on and is held on with a hose clamp. This one, it has a female fitting on the uh, pump side or the steering side, the rack and pinion side and a female on this side. And so we're going to have to get a union, male to male union, that will go from this thread to the line going to the steering mechanism. So fairly simple, the most difficult part will be uh, fabricating a mount that will work with this, that will fit in this tight clearance area. But let me give you a, a shot of where we plan on putting this, the general area. Okay, as a viewer noted on an earlier video, the original stock starting battery went on the left side here. You can see part of it where the mount went, sat on one side here, came out. Anyway, it sat in this area right here. But whoever put the, uh, the Ford small block in it that it had when we received the car had relocated the battery over here. We're simply reusing this battery. It's a nice size. You know, we had already had accommodations for it. So we're going to try to maintain that location if we can. <laughs> we may have to remove it and relocate it somewhere else based on battery uh, configuration. But I think we're far enough forward, we're not gonna have traction batteries come this far forward. So that should be permanent location. So what's nice is that freed up a location here, which is perfect for our use because as you'll see, these are the lines right here. We have them wire tied up. And here's one and here's the other. That's the return. This is the pressure line. So those come off of the rack down here and they're perfect for placing a pump right here in this front cabinet. Like yay. So if we can put this pump in here, something like this, um, that'd be great. There's issues, you know, we got to have um, clearance for other items that are going to be going up front here, as well as the hood. But I think it will work. I think we can put it in this area right here. So in doing so, we probably won't have to change our lines at all. I think they'll probably reach. And that gives us the convenience there that uh, puts a little weight on this side. So between the brakes and the power steering, we're kind of compensated uh, for the battery on that side. We like to keep things evenly weighted. Um, so, no, all looks good. Like I said, we won't put this in until after we get the uh, motor and front battery rack 
design and then um, figure out how we're going to do our mounting system and where things go. There's going to be a radiator that's going to go in here. Um, our controllers may go in front up here. A um, lot to be determined once the motor and uh, batteries are here. Well, that's it for this week's episode. A little bit shorter for a change. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to info at ev 4 I thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next Wednesday.